All right, so this is the 2019 F250. And if you look in here, we've got a cigarette lighter port here. I also have a power inverter that uh, allows for something to plug in there. I also have a power port down here, and there's two USB ports. Off of one of those power ports, I have this contraption that allows me to plug in three cigarette lighter power ports and four more USB ports. And here we have a 2020 Rockwood Ultralight. So 2019 truck and at the time of filming, 2020 Rockwood Ultralight. These are the two newest vehicles that you can purchase from the RV dealer and of course from Ford. Inside here, other than a little bit of a mess, you're gonna find that there is a charging center that has a cigarette lighter or a power port and two USBs. Why am I showing you those things? Well, it's because you need to have the ability to charge and power your devices. Right now I'm currently shooting on a Galaxy 10 Plus and we also have not only an S9 Plus, but a Note 8. All of those require USB to charge. We also have two laptops and I don't even know how many cameras. I have a Sony Action Cam. I have another Sony Action Cam. I have two Sony handheld camcorders. I have numerous audio devices. And my wife also has a DSLR. All of those can be charged using, of course, USBs or cigarette lighter ports or plug into the wall capability if you have a power inverter, like what I just showed in the truck. The thing is, is if we are away from those items, or in the case of the RV, I don't want to necessarily use up the batteries that the RV has, I need a way to keep all that stuff topped off. I need a way to charge everything. And I've talked about this in the past with what would be, in our case, a generator that's connected to the RV that will allow it to charge the batteries and run accessories inside and, of course, charge other items that are plugged into the RV, uh, such as my laptop or our phone chargers. But if we get away from those things just for the least bit of time and we find ourselves out somewhere, uh, we don't want to necessarily run the generator and we don't want to use the RV batteries. And the reason that I don't want to use the RV batteries is because the RV batteries, which there's two of them, are meant to run the critical components on the RV such as if it's cold we'll run the propane furnace and that requires 12 volts to run the blower motor and that comes from the batteries if i'm wanting to run the refrigerator even if it's on propane it needs 12 volts so it can fire the igniter that will keep the propane burning the same with the hot water tank even though i'm running on propane it needs 12 volts to fire the igniter to keep that propane burning to keep my hot water hot and as far as the water pump that we use to take showers, to use the restroom, uh, the uh, onboard you know, toilet, and uh, of course, everything else, like all the lighting that's inside here, that's all 12 volts. So you can see why I don't wanna necessarily run and charge all of these, and, and I don't wanna say non-critical, but less critical components that uh, we need to communicate and shoot video with and that's where this product is coming into play and I've talked about them before and I've got yet another one. This is the Sawaki S270 and I've used Sawaki products before. A matter of fact, the last power brick that I actually reviewed was a Sawaki and it was in a really small portable handy to carry form factor and was very comparable to this one. However, I think this one might take it just a step further because of the ease of everything as far as the form factor. It's very easy to understand. I mean, it's really childlike. It almost looks like a toy. So what this is, is not a portable solar generator. This is basically a battery bank. Is it portable? Yes. 
Can you charge it with solar? Yes, if you have solar panels that are not included. Yes, you could charge it with solar. And does it generate electricity? It basically stores it and releases it. So you could say that it does generate it. Um, basically, this is a battery bank that has a converter, inverter, and a charger, or at least a charge controller built into it. So let's go ahead and open it up, take a look at it, because there's not a lot of mystery behind these things. And as far as the brand, I've been impressed so far with uh, Sawaki. Um, the other one I've had no problems with whatsoever, and I was glad to hear that they wanted to contact me about this one. With full disclosure, this was sent to me at no charge. However, they are not paying me to do this review. They are not telling me one way or the other as far as the way that I review it or what I need to talk about. I basically said, let me take a look at it and see if it's something that I like and something that I would utilize. Now, I've already been through this. I've already opened it. I've already looked at it, but I want to show you what's in the box and what it looks like when you get it. Uh, so if you're watching this video, that means that I must like it to some extent or it wouldn't be here. First thing that we got out of here is the uh, portable solar generator manual and uh, there's different languages in here so don't think it's that thick just to cover this because again it's very simple i'm going to have a plug in the wall ac charger that's to charge this device and that's what this is here that's a dcn that'll allow it to charge because this converts ac to dc that's all this does that's why this box is here you also can use your cigarette lighter inside your vehicle or as you've seen inside the rv and you can plug that in that same input to charge it's the exact same plug on the end if you can see off in the distance here here's a cigarette lighter adapter or power port adapter that's for output and that's for these ports that are on the back which I'll show you here in just a second and the final one I'm not going to open up here but these are solar MC4 connectors because again with that same input going in the same spot you can plug this up to a solar panel and this has an MPPT charger inside of it and uh, a charge controller. And you can charge this using solar panels. As far as the device, it's very small. You can see my hand just dwarfs this. I know this has carrying handles, but honestly, um, I don't need them. Not, not for how small this is. It's very, very tiny. You have four outputs on the back, 12 volt DC output, 15 amp max. This is the only accessory that they give you that plugs into this that you can access these. You can order more of these. I believe there's also some other accessories that allow you to connect to this that you can then connect however you need, but this is really the only feasible way I think you could use these ports unless you're wiring direct into something that you want to uh, use this for which you may find that you you may have something that you need but this one cigarette lighter port that's what these are for going back to this side you can see you have your DCN like I talked about and then of course this buttons for these flash you know there you go bright then there's some sort of SOS flash or just a emergency flash below that is a little opening for a fan for cooling reasons I don't know if you noticed it, but whenever I push this button, everything lit up top here. This is your power indicator. This is to indicate how much power uh, the device has. Um, whenever there's anything connected to it that has a draw to it, uh, that light's going to come on. So let's go ahead and flip that up on end. I love the fact that you could pretty much tilt it any way that you want. So that, when you turn it on, tells you how much power you have. Now you can see here, um, even though they appear to be illuminated, in person these are not illuminated on the end so that tells me that this battery could use a little bit of a charge this is coming right out of the box and me screwing around with it to some extent so I did use up a little energy very simple there's not any kind of a, a wattage scale or usage scale or anything like that uh, but that tells you how much you have and how much you have left moving around to the other side opposite of those power ports where this hooks up to you have USB ports. You have three that are 2.1 max, uh, 5 volt USB, and then you have the quick charge 3.0. Obviously, you can tell which one that is, is because it's a different color. So it does have quick charging capability. Like I said, all of those smartphones that I mentioned, the Note 10 Plus that we have, the S9 Plus, and the Note 8, 
all support quick charge. So it's kind of nice that they give you the ability to do that. And then rolling around to the end, you have your final connection. And that is just either a two prong plug, you know, something that you have that's just two prong or three prong uh, to where you can plug into this and use it. Now, 100 watts max. That's it. That's all this is going to do is 100 watt max. It has built in protection. If you go over that, you're going to cause this to go into a shutdown mode. So you have to power everything off. You have to turn the unit off and let it reset itself. It's protected so it doesn't have any issues with basically burning out and overcharging or over discharging the batteries in this case. Now, as far as going DC in with a solar panel, the solar panel can't be very big at all. Uh, even though it has an MPPT controller on it, you're only going to be able to put what they say is 13 to 22 volts in, and that's two amps maximum, just two amps. Really, as far as the charging, I would probably go for, in my case, this part the most, because we're always in a point where we can drive down the road, but you've seen our truck, we're using all of our power ports. Uh, but it could be that we might need to access this once we get to our location. Again, we might get to a point where we don't wanna tap into the batteries that are on board the RV and allow us to use this. We've done that in the past. We've done that actually plenty of times. Um, I used to carry around a couple of battery banks that don't have any of these features that you can either charge by USB or you can plug a USB into it and use the battery source that's available. Uh, but this one has quite a bit of battery oomph to it compared to what the uh, little, you know, the battery banks that I have. Now it does have a modified sign input which is a clean power. You need that for computers and phones and stuff like that. And you can see there's some information here that we'll go over real quick just to give you an idea of what it what it is and what it looks like. So again, it's got 13,500 milliamp batteries. It's 150 watt hour max. Again, there's a 100 watt uh, surge protector that's on here. Uh, the input as far as the adapter, 15 volts, two amps. Uh, same with the solar panel charging. You're only at two amps max. Uh, charging time using 15 volts at two amps. Uh, you're at seven to eight hours when this is fully discharged. So your AC output, you have 150 watt max, but that's just the quick peak thing. 100 watts, continuous. And if you go over that, again, this thing will stop charging. As far as your USB outputs, you can see here, you have that quick charger that's 18 watts at four to nine volts. And then the other three, you're five volts at 2.1 amp max. And then one more thing, the DC output, you have four of them. You can do nine to 12 volts and 10 amps continuous or 15 amps max. And as far as the uh, wattage, as far as DC output, you can do max 180 watts, again, DC, um, but that's that's just a peak, 120, all it can handle. So basically, if you're doing some sort of DC output, you're, you're connecting to something that's 12 volt on here. So that would be any of the ports that are on the back here. Uh, you can only do uh, 180 watts just for a quick burst, and 120 is the maximum uh, as far as continuous use. And as far as the outlet, which is here, uh, 120 is like the burst that you could get out of it just for a quick second. 100 is the tops. So you better watch what you're plugging in there. Don't don't expect to plug in like some sort of a, a little portable heater or anything like that, or some kind of a huge draw item, uh, which my laptop will actually draw more than that. However, Heidi's laptop does not, so it, we're in good shape there. You've got uh, your flashlight on the end, it says it's got 500, greater than 500 times life cycles. You've got weight of 1.3 kilograms. That's under three pounds. That's not even three pounds. And as far as the dimensions on this, again, it's really small. They, they're showing uh, 184, 109, 118 millimeters. So you're about seven by four by four and a half inches uh, as far as seven inches in length and uh, four and a half tall 
by uh, four inches wide it looks like yeah yeah it's a little bit taller than it is wide and again the form factor is really really small my like i said my hand just kind of d- d- dwarfs the thing and again three pounds so it's not very heavy so why is it that i keep on looking at these things well as you've seen at the beginning of the video these manufacturers they'll only put stuff in rvs new rvs and in trucks new trucks or cars that people are utilizing people need usb ports they still need power ports it's something that you can't really go without in this day and age and try to stay connected with everybody what this thing does is allow you to go out and not have your car or your rv readily accessible and still do everything that you want to do you can get away with the smaller battery banks you know the little thing that you got to carry that you know it may or may not be enough to keep your phone charged uh, but i'm finding that these things are coming in really really handy and here's the thing what if you have a truck that don't have those ports or what if you have an rv that don't have those ports you're going to have to run your normal wall chargers and most rvs don't have inverter technology built into it the only way you can make your 110 volt outlets you know outlets that look like this run inside your rv or have power is if your rv is plugged in whether it's plugged into your campground plugged into your house or it's plugged into a generator that's running that's the only way you can get this power so you're kind of relegated to using usb ports and also needing power ports like this so really good device i like the fact that this one's even smaller than the last one and it does such a good job as far as keeping it simple uh again it feels like sort of a toy um it does have rubber pads on the bottom for non-slip but everything else is just, you know, plastic. It's just a plastic. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic, but it is plastic nonetheless. There is no odd smell or anything like that. I know a lot of guys are concerned about that. Whenever I opened this initially, there was not a single weird smell out of it. And as far as the brand and the manufacturer, like I said, I've got that other Swaki, uh, that handheld battery bank, and it's done just fine. Um, it's, it's really good. And if you remember, uh, I talked about it versus the Rock Pals that I had and that Rock Pals the one thing that I liked about it was it was like a little brick you just threw it down and it wouldn't knock over it wouldn't fall over and that Sawaki the other Sawaki that I reviewed uh, that one you know when it's standing upright you can knock it over and I didn't really like that well guess what it's cured I'm back to where I was before this is not going to fall over uh, once it's down it's down it's solid so, of course, as you've seen all along here, the links are down below. Uh, you can click the link. It'll take you right to it. And there may or may not be some sort of a discount code that we could use for this. I'm not sure at this point if they're going to be offering a discount code. Uh, it's worth a look in the description. So if you see it in the description, use the discount code. See if you can get some more money off. Um, usually what I find happens with uh, these manufacturers that offer discount codes they time out after a period of time and what you can find is that the reason that they time out their discount code is because they have discounted the product for everybody without using a code I've not run into that quite a few times so reviews on products like this yeah there's a reason and it's all these ports right here you need these things you you've got to have these ports whenever you're out and about to stay connected and this gives you the ability to walk away from the RV and in my case the truck and have the ability to keep stuff charged if I'm away for a period of time and that's happened uh, we've been at the beach or we've been on some sort of a uh, filming expedition <laughs> to where I have cameras with me and the cameras are running out of power either going back to the truck or having this handy is the only way to go ahead and charge those back up again and sometimes it's just a matter of me forgetting to charge the camera and I'm driving to a location I can plug into this and drive the whole way not have to worry about my truck and plugging into one of those ports and know that it'll be charged by the time I get there or at least topped off to the point where I can film and I have this to go back to again links down below I appreciate it guys and as always we hope to see you out there bye